Hello again, um, this is my second video. I want to just quickly run through the shoulder joint um, and some clinical um, details that go along with that. Um, this video will skirt over a lot of things. Um, there's not enough time to run through uh, lots of detail. So I would recommend to go along with these videos uh, to consult the pages on teachmeanatomy.info. Uh, where you will find a lot more detail, um, especially concerning uh, sort of the finer points of nerve injuries, for example. So, as uh, I mentioned in the previous video, you know, starting off looking at the x-ray, for example, this one, I can say this is a right AP view of a shoulder. Um, in this case, I'm using an x-ray that has got an abnormality for this first example image but I'm going to quickly run through some basic anatomy and then uh, one or two common injuries. So here's an AP shoulder. So that's as if you're looking at the person front on. Here we have the shaft of the humerus coming up to the surgical neck of the humerus, which is commonly fractured. And a fracture here would threaten two structures. The auxiliary nerve which wraps around there um, and the auxiliary nerve uh, supplies the deltoid and teres minor muscles so this would result in uh, what well, damage to it would result in the patient being unable to abduct their arm and also they would get uh, sensory changes over the regimental badge area which, if you imagine a badge on the shoulder of a military jacket, that is the pattern of uh, loss of sensation you would get, as well as the motor changes in an aux axillary nerve uh, damage. Then the second structure would be the posterior circumflex artery. Um, so this would be you know, causing a lot of bleeding and possibly depriving structures of blood. So that's surgical neck fracture. Then as we come up, there's the anatomical neck of the humerus. Then the greater and lesser tuberosities. We have the glenoid that the head of the humerus artic articulates with. So the glenoid, you'll notice, is actually very shallow. Uh, the bony glenoid, that is. And so this is why the glenoid labrum and other structures such as those of the rotator cuff and the uh, glenohumeral ligaments stabilize the head in this very shallow cup. Um, but unfortunately, you know, with the great amount of movement you get in the shoulder, this sacrifices stability, so you can get dislocations commonly. Um, now we move on to the acromion here of the scapula. There's the coracoid of the scapula. Here's the clavicle. So you'll notice in this x-ray, the clavicle should articulate at the acromiocavicular joint, but is not. It's a acromiocavicular joint dislocation. So that should articulate, but is not in this case. So here's the length of the clavicle. There's a sternoclavicular joint. Here are ribs, and you can see the black lungs within, with some lung markings. Then so there's lateral border of scapula, you can see coming down up there. Um, so that's some real basic kind of quick anatomy. Now, clavicle fractures are very common indeed. Um, so you can see here, if you were to follow my advice and try and follow the cortex round, you'd go, oh, what's that? That's not normal. So fractured clavicle. And commonly, these fracture between the uh, lateral third and medial two thirds. And what happens is the sternocleidomastoid muscle pulls on the proximal segment, so that goes upward, while the weight of the arm pulls on the distal or the lateral segment, uh, pulling it downward. So you get this pattern of this segment up, that segment down. And then the next big thing uh, that you can get in the shoulder is dislocation. So if you were to look at this gentleman, look at his shoulders, one of them curved round like a normal shoulder, the other one 
seems strangely dipped in, uh, and that is due to a dislocation of his shoulder, which would look like this if it was anterior. So the most common shoulder dislocation is anteriorly, uh, with posterior dislocations being much less common and really mainly occurring in people who've had a seizure or an electric shock. So here's an anterior dislocation. You can only really absolutely confirm that it is an anterior dislocation by looking at two views on an x-ray. I'm only running through the AP view because uh, the other views can be quite difficult um, to sort out what you're looking at. Uh, and I may run through them in a later video, but it's best just to start with the AP view. So in this case, we see here's the glenoid before I mentioned that shallow cup. And now the humerus isn't there. It's not articulating with it. It is resting in front of and below the coracoid. Well, you can see it below the coracoid there. So that's a good trick to see this uh, anterior dislocation. And there it is, not where it should be. Um, so again, relatively common, these dislocations. So that's a very quick set of videos. Um, really quick sort of explanation. Um, I hope it has been useful. Thank you.